Good morning. So first of all, I'd like to say thanks very much to uh, the whole of the Turing Trust for having this whole event, for inviting me here. It's quite a phenomenal event, I think. So as you just heard, I work in the middle of finance. I used to be in film. I got into finance, into fintech. Quite a long story. Uh, but about 18 months ago, I started a, a group with a group of friends, really, called TechFugees. Uh, we had a hackathon, first of all. We had a conference. Uh, we're now in 26, sorry, 30 cities in 26 countries around the world. So I'd like to go through very quickly today what we've done so far. We're certainly thinking about the use of AI now, certainly blockchain. I know that the UN's just concluded a, a successful trial with Ethereum blockchain. Here I go with, with terminology, uh, with the World Food Program. So it is happening. There's a lot there. There's a lot of intellectual capital in this room around AI, I think. So I'd be very interested afterwards to find out what you think about how AI can really help refugees, essentially. And so before I start, I'll just give you a quick kind of eye in, a perspective on the refugee's journey and really how we, we've come to see it. So there we have it, really. A lot goes through our phones, essentially. Very much about connections. Um, I work, obviously, with lots of banks. They're kind of almost freaking out about how different the world's becoming with this. Um, what we really see is a very big potential to help people. We have this unprecedented, really, refugee crisis. We have it around the world. We've got how many people are displaced now globally? I have about 60 million people displaced globally, about 21.3 million refugees half of whom are under 18. So we have a great potential here to help people. We see here, obviously, first question. A lot of our work recently, well, from the beginning, has been about connectivity. So where am I? Where's the Wi-Fi? The average time spent in a camp is 17 years. Something else we discovered, I'm sure lots of NGO professionals in this room perhaps know this, um, refugee camps can be for life. There are certain issues you need to solve there. A lot of people ask me when I say I work with refugees and technology, where do you do it? And because it's technology, it literally is everywhere. 
So we use blockchain in London. Obviously, it's been used now uh, in, in Jordan, I think. Uh, so every single place that a refugee is, um, that's where we work. So as I said, we began September 2015. Now we had 300 refugees, engineers, social entrepreneurs. They all showed up for the first event. And then TechFugees became a global meme after that. We did have a very big media network, which helped with that, but it did become a global meme. New York, Oslo, Krakow, Belgrade, Helsinki. We'd just been back to Belgrade. Tech scales, obviously, very quickly. Uh, as we know, UNHCR, working with MIT, UNICEF Innovation is there. Many different innovation arms of NGOs exist. We decided to work really around social inclusion, infrastructure, education, identity, and health, the five key kind of aggregating areas. Um, here we have rugged Wi-Fi, obviously the first point being Wi-Fi. This is one case. We also work with a, um, an initiative that uses shipping containers as doctor's surgeries. It, that began in Hamburg. So doctors were consulting to refugees literally at the side of the street. They couldn't do it anymore. So some promoters found um, shipping, shipping containers. They turned them into doctor's surgeries. Cisco sponsored them with live Wi-Fi. Simultaneous interpretation came into the mix. Some of that with AI. And suddenly, doctors were able to consult to refugees directly. So now that particular social enterprise is looking to, uh, to expand. They've got tons of containers. I know they want to work in Malawi, several other places. And they really need to connect to NGOs private entities, um, more tech companies to find out how that can be done. So that's just Wi-Fi. I don't have long. I don't want to shower you with too much information, so I'll skip through a few things. Um, here we have, yes, digital cash with blockchain. A lot of initiatives around that. Aid Tech in Lebanon working particularly well with that. I've got a pro project with the World Bank in September on digital ID. Again here, teaching coding, Ready School in Berlin. Uh, in Australia, I think we have some experienced coders already from Lebanon who are now working at Deloitte because of TechFugee's involvement. So they've gone straight into jobs. They, they've got parity in their career. Um, MedShare in London, allowing doctors to discuss and dis diagnose cases remotely. Humanitas, chatbot for refugees, goes between Greek and Arabic. Um, there is a problem, duplication. So yes. It's very good to be in this event, even, to talk to people. Very, very important to actually have face-to-face -face and to discover what everybody else is doing. There isn't really a network for this. We have this unprecedented global crisis with refugees, and we also have this big spread of technology. We've seen the effect in the media of technology. It does scramble things incredibly, <clears throat> and we see this effect here, too. So, yes, duplication is a problem. Lack of understanding of the problem space is another problem. Um, so that's why we engage with NGOs, that's why I talk to NGOs. They have a, a lot of historical information, obviously, on this problem space, which they can help distill to us. Co-creating <coughs> with refugees, extremely important. Using a bootstrap attitude, starting from nothing, very important. So yes, we have 30 chapters, 15,000 members, and literally hundreds of projects. So we could use some AI, too, to uh, certainly go through those. And yes, really, it's what we do. We coordinate and curate the tech community's response to the needs of refugees. So a lot of duplication, we find a kind of a, a central place for people to come and propose solutions. Hackathons, you're probably familiar with. Very, very good for generating ideas. Obviously, conferences, as we know now, much better for working on ideas and actually getting a, a cogent result. So yes, that's our focus, which I've been through already. Connectivity, education, identity, health, and inclusion. These are our strategic partners, event partners. Quite a few names from tech here. There's a big willingness to help, certainly with the media coverage of the refugee crisis. There's a, it's a very big willingness to help. <clears throat> that isn't in short supply. Almost everybody I talk to wants to help. It's just finding the right context, finding how you do that. So thinking about um, solutions, we help 
<coughs> sorry, NGOs be more efficient, help them make a difference. Yeah, sure, you can donate. Um, the ultimate objective is to support NGOs in finding durable tech solutions that enable refugees around the world to rebuild their lives with their dignity and safely. I was kind of intrigued by the um, chatbot for parking tickets. Don't know if anybody heard of that. I think it got rid of about 18,000 parking tickets in a day. Replaced lawyers, essentially, on that. So now the, that founder is looking at helping refugees with uh, asylum applications quite successfully. So that's one application of AI that's quite useful. So as we say, without the use of smartphones and the internet, this humanitarian crisis would have been a much bigger catastrophe, we think. Um, can turn a refugee camp into a smart city. We've just been in Jordan to a refugee camp with, this, with, a, with a hackathon. We come out with three winners, one of which um, follows, identifies water leaks, for example. So it becomes a much more smart city just using very, very basic sensors. So, yes, possible to have a lot of transformation. Very, very quick presentation, but I think perhaps now you can see, if you didn't know already, how enormous the problem space is and how many permutations, how many potential solutions there are to each problem, how many iterations of that we can, we can have. So I'm really interested in seeing how AI can help in this space. I don't know if anybody here has any ideas or knows of any other projects, but I certainly enjoy hearing more about them. <laughs>